All right, welcome back to the Wrestling with Altitude podcast. I am your host, Mr. Fourth Row, and I'm very excited because I have two of my uh, most favorite people in the world, and that is Brutal Bob Evans and Tough Timmy Hughes. They are Tough Guy Inc. Gentlemen, how are you doing? It's it's great to be here, Mister Fourth Row. I'm excited. I'm excited to be here on the podcast. Uh, I'm excited. It's we've been we've been trying to connect for a while, and it finally we finally lined it all up. And I'm excited to be here, and I'm excited to be in Colorado and see you next week. So uh, it's going to be a good time. Yeah, we uh, we've already talked to Mister First Row, Mister Second Row, Mister Third Row. <laughs> So it's about time we get to talk to Mr. Fourth Row. <laughs> All right, great. Yeah, I'm just on the list. On the list. Uh, that was great. All right. Uh, so let's uh, kind of start off at the beginning. Um, how did uh, you guys get interested in uh, professional wrestling? Did you uh, watch it as a, a youngster? Um, well, I I started I started watching it when I was was 14 years old i watched uh i watched wrestlemania 22 at my friend's house and mick foley went uh got speared through the flaming table and ever since then i was i was i was hooked to it so that's and and i got i got in the i got into the local indie scene and and became a fan of ring of honor and and i was just ever since then i just wanted to be a wrestler Well, that was Tim, by the way. This yeah. is Bob. Yeah. In case, oh, in case the whole world doesn't know who we are, <laughs> um, I'm Tim. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, Tim's story is a lot different from uh, mine. But um, I started watching it when I was because uh, I'm quite a bit older than Tim. So I I started watching it uh, in 1984, right when Hogan and Piper were getting big. The war to settle the score and all that. Which I just I actually just showed Tim uh, the whole special uh, a little while ago. Um, just to show them kind of like what how it was like back then. So, um, was yeah, awesome. I started some, yeah, it was cool. So it was nice to go back and visit it. But that's pretty much what got me into it. And uh, started in 1992 in a little group in New Bedford, Massachusetts, and uh, been going ever since. So and uh, started in Ring of Honor about nine years ago, and still make appearances there with Tim sometimes but we've kind of branched out and, and become our own thing, our own brand. Uh, so now we're not necessarily in any other, but any other business except for the tough guy Inc. business. So, ah, ah, cool. All right. Um, so how did, um, uh, uh Bob, when did you, uh, have like your, your first match? It was, it was in 1992. Did you say? Yeah. First match so, was April, 1992 yeah. against a guy named, uh, Bobby Moran, who's uh, unfortunately no longer with us, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, in a, in that same little mill building in, uh, New Bedford, Massachusetts. And, uh, they had a decent little crowd there, probably 150, 200 people mm. at the time. And, uh, but there really wasn't much of an underground scene back then. So it was, it's kind of like what's happening now, uh, mm-hmm. with, they kind of really, the only place to go was Kowalski's in Boston and New Bedford was about an hour away from Boston and there were guys that wanted to wrestle. So a couple of the journeyman guys kind of said, well, if you get a class together, we'll train you. And uh, they kind of started their own thing in uh, New Bedford. And it's actually still going today. It's called Top Row Promotions. And they still run uh, two or three events a month. So it's uh, kind of, but that they're kind of, they were kind of doing the same thing back then. It's just that instead of four or five groups popping up, there was one. But it offered a lot of opportunities to me and several other other people. So yeah, nineteen ninety two, long time. Uh, and and Tim, uh, how did you get started? How was your first match? Uh, what was it like? Uh, I started in I started in August two thousand ten. That was my first match. Uh, I wrestled a guy named Will Wyeth, who who uh, he was he was a, a journeyman in my area at the time in in New Jersey and. He was he was very helpful to me in the beginning. So, and I started at a place called Ace Professional Wrestling, which is still around. It's still a company. They uh, they still run monthly shows here in New Jersey, and um, yeah. So so I I I got to I, I got to learn from from quite a few 
different, like really talented local guys, a guy named Danny Moff and Azriel and yeah, and and a guy named EC Negro, who's who's always been there for me in a lot of ways, and and they really they really helped me out in the in the beginning before I I I started and before I trained at the Monster Factory and the ROH Dojo as well. All right, and uh, do you guys ever get a chance to go back and uh, and wrestle for those for those promotions? And if so, what was what's that like? Uh, um, I'll speak first. Uh, uh, the, uh, I've, I've, we've gotten to, I haven't gotten to wrestle for that promotion in quite some time, but, but I've gotten to wrestle for promotions in the surrounding area with a lot of similar guys and they're always, everybody's super supportive of me. It's, it's really, it's really a cool, it's really a cool thing. Um, everybody like is super proud of what I'm doing and, getting to travel all over the country and getting to learn this great business with, with Bob. It's, it's, it's just been an incredible journey. So, so as far as when, when I'm back in, in the New Jersey area wrestling or New York, New Jersey area, everybody is very super supportive and very happy that, that I've gotten to branch out and see the world. And, and Bob, (laughs) Yeah, I've uh, I still go back to top row promotions, probably not as much as I'd like to because we're booked in other places. But um, you know, I'd say several times a year, you know, three four times, maybe more. Um, they they have a very good uh, base there, and and they're really churning out a lot of good talent. That's where um, TK Ryan, Vinnie Marcellia, um, that's where those guys have come from, and there's a uh, as a gentleman, uh, AG Anthony Green, who's making a lot of waves, he got his break there. Um, so you know, it's it's nice to see the next general. Well, actually, it's two generations now um, doing a lot of that. We're uh, I've actually made it a goal the first half of the year to reach back to some of the quote unquote lesser leagues, and Tim's helping me with this um, in New England um, because that's really what kind of benefited me back in 2009 when I decided to close my school and kind of just become a roving instructor. I, I tried to go where I was needed the most and the top promotions in New England really are some of the elite promotions in the country. So they're, they're pretty set. Um, not that I wouldn't, not that they wouldn't welcome my visit, but I think I can be a little bit more helpful in the, in the lower groups, kind of like a ball, you know, kind of instead of triple a ball. So, um, just going to visit with them and I'm actually, working for a couple of groups and Tim will be helping me on that in the next few months. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, I, I try to get, I've, I've really, this is probably the most I've done in new England in several years. So, and it's, it's nice to take a break and kind of, you know, there's some personal stuff going on. Don't worry, everybody. I'm fine. But you know, there's some personal stuff going on that makes it easier for me to be a little closer to home. And, uh, I'm enjoying it because after hitting the road hard for 36 straight months, it was nice to kind of just relax and have a few moments where you could not have to drive a thousand miles on a weekend. Right. Gotcha. All right. And so, um, how did you guys meet? How, tell us about that. <laughs> well, ahead, I, I'm, yeah, I met, uh, I met Bob at, at the monster factory when I was, when I was a student there, uh, and I actually took his seminar, so which is which is quite fitting. Um, yeah, so I I I got to learn from him that day. I uh, he agreed to have a sixty minute match with me that that still hasn't happened. That will happen one day, and <laughs> one, uh, day. <laughs> one day it will happen. And um, but but yeah, it was uh, I got to I got to learn from him, and then and then through that uh, through the ROH seminars and through other seminars and stuff like that, I really got to get to work with him and, and get to know him. And we, we, we clicked as a team and that's, it kind of, it kind of moved forward from there. So. All right. And, and Bob, you have anything to, to add from the uh, instructor side? Uh, no, it was, uh, I felt like, uh, he was a nice kid. I met, 
along the way. And uh, I felt like he was getting kind of short shrift that day. Um, Danny Cage is a dear friend of mine, and he certainly wasn't trying to. There's just a lot of people that day, which was good. You know, I was blessed to have a lot of people there. Um, but I felt like Tim wasn't getting the individual attention he needed. And I kind of just took a liking to him because, you know, Tim's kind of awkward and goofy, and it kind of reminded me a little bit of myself back in the day. So it was kind of charming. And I, you know, he, he, he uh, you know, I kind of liked him right away. So, and uh, I could tell he was maybe a little bit behind athletically with some of the other guys, but I felt like he, you know, he never gave up and he always wanted to learn and had good questions and things like that. And then I said, uh, let me wrestle, I'll wrestle Tim for an hour. And Danny's like, oh, we don't have time for that. I said, oh, I'll wrestle him on the floor. And I think we got, what do we get Tim? about 17 minutes in? Yeah, 17 and minutes in, yeah. I was like, I'll wrestle him on the, I'll wrestle him on the amateur mats for an hour. I don't care. And we got about 17 <laughs> minutes in and just kind of, and I think we bonded on that moment. And uh, I think Tim was happy just to have someone who was, you know, not, not willing to give up on him. And, you know, cause Danny mm-hmm. was doing a good job with him, but there's always that, you know, that it, sometimes, sometimes it takes an extra person to come in and kind of confirm all the things that uh, Danny Cage had to say. And so, and then, uh, you know, we, we, Tim had been still been struggling. I think Tim will be, be able to talk to this a little bit more, but, uh, he went to the Ring of Honor seminar, and I think he was looking for something and found it because they, you know, people people say we resemble each other, kind of like Ole and Arn Anderson do, where he kind of looks like my son or my nephew or my little brother or whatever. So they kind of picked on us about it, and, you know, Tim was just going with the flow. I kind of fought it for about half a day, and then I said, you know what? Maybe this is a way to refresh myself after the cheeseburger feud was over. Um that's cheeseburger and ring of honor. I wasn't fighting <laughs> sandwiches. Right. Um, not a food fight. And then, yeah. So then it was, uh, and it was just a way to, you know, kind of get another hook, you know, like Tony Schiavone says on his podcast, you need a hook. And, and this was a way to get a hook and get another young guy and help another young guy along, which I'd love to do and kind of make myself, uh, current again. So, and, uh, I feel like we never really achieved that potential um, due to a bunch of different circumstances. I'm not bitter or complaining about it. It's just these things happen. And, uh, but we, there was a time when we really wanted to start teaming regularly and ring of honor wasn't offering us those chances and we love ring of honor and we have nothing bad to say about them, but it was time to kind of, you know, look, you know, Hey, if ring of honor is running 50 dates a year, that leaves 315 days on the schedule. So let's, try to fill some of those days. And we just made our, kept our weekends full and both made a serious commitment to this team. And I've never had someone so committed and serious to me aside from maybe my family and my wife. So, um, so it, he's done a great job. Uh, you know, we, 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 that's how the team formed, you know, three, three and a half years ago. And then we got super serious about it in September, 2015, Tim, 2016, 2016. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. So it was, uh, and then we, so, you know, here we are two, two and a half years later. And, I mean, yeah. hundreds, of, hundreds of matches as a team now. And it's really been a, a, a quite a ride, quite a ride. Yeah. It's been, it's fun. We've been in, gotten to wrestle in 37 States, did s- seminars all over the country, three provinces of Canada together. So it's just thousands upon thousands upon thousands of miles in a car in a in a bus in a in plane a in, a, in, a in a boat yep, yep in a boat yep so it's just been it's been a good it's been a, a some it's been some of the best years of my life it, it has been the best years of my life not some of the best years of my life this past these past specifically two years have have been the best years of my life so and okay, so you just were mentioning about all these modes of transportation. Did I did I remember did I remember seeing something out there that you guys are still looking for different ways to travel to events uh, when it comes to transportation, trying to get them all off on the checklist? Oh yeah, of course. Always. If, I mean, yeah, we we last year last year I you know we did we did a boat, a train, a bus, uh, a plane. Yeah, so I mean, if somebody wants to lend us out their helicopter or jetpack or uh, or hovercraft, 
uh, we we'd 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 like to borrow them because we need we need to get there as many we need to get to wrestling as many ways as possible to show people how possible it is. Just right. whatever you, whatever you do, whatever whatever your means, you gotta just get to you gotta get to wrestling no matter what. You gotta do the drive, you gotta do the flights, you gotta do boat rides and trains, whatever. Yeah, wherever wherever. Wherever it will take us to wrestling, we'd love to go. We'd love to use it. So. Oh, cool. All right. So, um, kind of one of the main reasons why I've got you guys on is because we are talking about seminars. So let's actually talk about um, Bob. How did you um, start with this idea of the um, doing these seminars at the Hangs with Bob se- seminars? I mean, what was that like? Well, I had started doing some seminars uh, anyway, just because I was I, I was feeling pretty confident about it once Ring of Honor started using me for their seminars, and it, it really helped me. And I also was part of a team that included Delirious and, my goodness, Jerry Lynn, Christopher Daniels, the Briscoes, Adam Cole, Jay Lethal, Kevin Kelly, Ian Riccoboni. I mean, just, just tons and tons, Todd Sinclair, tons and tons of great wrestling minds that could pass along their knowledge. And and I learned a whole bunch of teaching styles. um, And I realized kind of that I knew what I was talking about, which was really very, I mean, I'd I'd run a school for 10 years and everybody was pretty decent. So I knew I knew something, but it's nice to have that national confirmation. So I just started branching out and saying, Hey, if people want to, people want to use me for seminars, go ahead. And You know, I started doing some small seminars, just, hey, if you want to get a bunch of guys to work out, everybody throw in 20 bucks and, you know, no, no, it doesn't have to be fancy, but if you just want to get a workout in. And so I did that for a couple of years and just very informal. And then the Hangs with Bob concept was formed when I was sitting on my porch and I, I just had noticed that I took pictures with a bunch of people and they and they were all kind of doing well for themselves and they were all had getting major deals. So I basically tongue in cheek, jokingly took credit for it. You know, hangs with Bob goes to NXT, hangs with Bob goes to Japan, hangs with Bob goes to WWE, you know, that type of thing. So it kind of just, and then I said, well, Hey, that's kind of a, that's kind of a neat name for a seminar anyway, because I always hated the name. I mean, I don't, I use it all the time, but I don't really like that because I don't think it really, I think seminars can be kind of cold and calculated. And uh, I really, one thing I had learned was what to do. And another thing I've learned is what not to do by some of these trainers who I'm not going to mention, but I, I felt like there was a, there was a negative, a lot of negative stuff going on where it was old guys just yelling at you and holding it over your head that you didn't have knowledge and really kind of just, making it an outlet for their own insecurities. And I didn't feel like that was the right way to do it. So I said, well, let's just make it a hang, come hang with me, come hang out. We'll learn some stuff. We'll, we'll, it'll be a fairly relaxed environment. It'll be fun, be motivational. It'll be uplifting. You'll feel good about it. You may even shed a tear. You'll laugh a lot. I try to make it fun and, and, you know, but we work real hard too. And I get people thinking and I get people thinking about how they can, you know, kind of make a couple of bucks in this business, you know, so they can justify it to their wife or their husband or their the jerk at work who, oh, when are you going to make some money at this, you know? So I just kind of, and I figured out, kind of kind of answered all the questions that I wanted as a seminar. I mean, it's all great to come in and teach people how to do hip tosses and all that stuff. And that's, you know, it's all that stuff is necessary. But the biggest thing you can do is teach these kids how to kind of become a business on their own. So and I met Matt Yaden from Rocky Mountain Pro at a Ring of Honor seminar, and he was really impressed because I took the time to, you know, work with him a little off to the side and, you know, just kind of spent extra time with him. And he said, well, hey, you know, we'd love to have you come in for a seminar. And I thought he was just kind of paying me lip service. And then he was really like he pushed it hard. He kept following up. Hey, I want to bring you in. I want to bring you in. And I said, okay, you know. And Matt was one of the first guys who really believed in me. That's why I'm, I'm, you know, I'm proud to call Rocky Mountain Pro one of my homes. And this is one of the reasons why we're doing this here. 
you know, Matt was one of the first people to instill that confidence in me. And I tell, I tell people all the time, if it wasn't for Matt, I don't know if I would have gotten to where I am today. So Matt's done a great job, not only lifting up his own people, but, you know, he helped me realize my potential too. So I'm very grateful, which is, you know, why we're doing the big camp at his place, you know, the biggest one I've ever done. Yeah. And, um, and Tim, so you're, um, now you're helping too now with the, um, hangs with Bob as well, you know, and, and doing some, uh, teaching and instructing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, I feel like my role is, is, is kind of the, the, the generation like connector because I feel like I'm not too far removed from, from the point when I was like completely clueless on, on how to do wrestling and where to go and how to, you know, how to meet people, how to, you know, how to even sell merchandise or, or, you know, how to even wrestle a match, you know, it's, I'm not, I feel like I'm not super far removed from that. So I kind of, I can relate uh, in, in a way that, that like helps them understand. And I, I think I bring, I think I bring a unique perspective to the table as, as well. And I made a slightly, a slightly different one than Bob's, even though Bob is the master at what he does. He's like the best of, he's the best of, at, in, in my, in my personal opinion, he's the best of all time when it comes to doing seminars, when it comes to, when it comes to doing that, but I feel like I add a little flavor. I feel like Bob, Bob's the play-by-play guy. He can, he does all the nuts and bolts. He does about the business. He does all that stuff, and I feel like I, I come in there as the color guy and add, add a little bit of flavor to to the seminar to help to help the 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 younger guys understand, uh, paint a broader picture. I got you. Cool. All right. So um, then I was going. Then I was going to ask also too. So uh, Bob, you were talking about, uh, you know, how you got started. So so basically, with the name, you kind of do you feel like you just kind of using that name kind of gave it some um, pizzazz as well as you know actually giving it a branding. Yeah, I think the. I mean, I think you need you need the. I mean, these days you need kind of a brand, and people talk about it, and I think they overthink it. I think they need to. They think they need to come up with the next Coke or Kleenex or McDonald's or you know a big, you know Google. You know, you don't have to come up with something like that. You just have to come up with something that's your own, and again, a hook. You know, something that the people can go. Oh yeah, you know, like one of the things. One of the things I've been grateful for is people just kind of go, yeah, I've taken a Bob seminar before, and that's pretty much attributed to me. So I've managed to kind of make the Bob thing uh, kind of my own too, which is great. And the fact that I'm the most prolific seminar guy ever doesn't hurt because I go into these little small towns and, you know, Tim and I are driving and we're like, I've never heard of this town. Where are we? I don't know. And then there'll be 250 people there. And, you know, I was I was telling Tim about a, a – and, and – I said, yeah, we're going into the show that they, they call these guys backyarders and they knock them. And the show that knocks them draws 100 and the show that supposedly has all the quote unquote backyarders and it has 400 and they sell out every show. Yeah. So I just we, we laugh at this because, you know, one of the things that is good about being a national guy and Tim will Tim Tim. This is one of Tim's, I think, favorite parts of it is you, you just don't get you just don't get buried into all the local drama because you just do your thing and move on. And we always try to leave places better than how we found them. So we're not, we're not burning towns to the ground when we leave. We're actually planting seeds for the future. But I mean, that's, that's one of the things that I, 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 one of the things that's helped about becoming a national guy is that you're a national guy. So you don't get stuck in all the local indie politics and all the, this guy said, I can't work here. And this guy doesn't want anybody in his town. And, you know, this one's sleeping with this one, and it's just, it turns into just a, 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 you know, a very difficult situation to be involved in. So it's one of the things that has helped us, helped us out a lot with the branding and the, becoming a national thing is that you can just move on, be everybody's friend and kind of move on. Right. 
Okay, so uh, maybe this might be a question about planting those seeds. I would guess maybe some of your favorite things that you've seen uh, outcome from these seminars is, and I, I think I've seen it just in this case, for example, in Rocky Mountain Pro, uh, we've seen people that have been introduced, like your seminars and main introductions, and people have moved across the country to go and join other promotions. I mean, I mean, is that, is that the case? Am I thinking that's correctly? And if so, what's that like to see that where people now have done this and just now flourished? Well, we've, we, you know, we, we, we do what we can do to make things better. And, and one of the things, again, it, it's kind of the, it's kind of another byproduct to be in the whole national thing is sometimes you show these people how silly some of the politics are. So we've managed to, We've managed to heal, uh, not heal, because that's very strong, but we've managed to help facilitate a lot of the groups in Quebec, uh, Canada, get along now. And a lot of them work together now. Mm. And they all are very good at promoting shows, and they're all good at drawing. So now they're drawing great, even bi- even bigger houses, because they're working together. And Kansas has, you know, Billy Simmons, and, and Billy will be a part of our seminar Thursday and Friday. Billy Simmons has done a great job of uniting Kansas wrestling. And now there's five or six groups that uh, are part of his alliance. And it's not collusion or anything. It's just, hey, you run this weekend and we'll run in, in a couple of weeks. And these other guys, it's kind of just the, hey, let's not, run a, let's not run against each other. Let's use a lot of the same talent. Let's move everybody around and let's get these guys more work. Um, and I've seen, I've seen that a lot. I've seen... I've seen people go to mats. Um, a lot of people yeah. have gone to mats. Well, well, um, even I, like you know, I send people to mats all the time. You can even, so. yeah. I mean, even like examples of like guys that have that have moved to Colorado because of the opportunities that are happening there. Like like Vlad, Vlad Balashov. I got mm-hmm. that. I got that correctly. And then, and Chongo. Those are two guys that, who moved. Uh, from completely different parts of the country. Chango moved from Seattle. Vlad moved from North Carolina and and really just like made Rocky Mountain Pro their home and really embraced the Colorado, like the whole state and, and the, the Colorado wrestling scene and have really flourished out there. That's, I mean, I feel, I feel super confident. Those two guys that, that, that have attended that have attended the seminars and decided that they wanted better for themselves and, and are really, are really doing well right now. Yeah. And that was, that was actually two people that were top of my mind. Cause of course I know them very well um, being in the mm-hmm. same, you know, same area and see them every week. So yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And, and then there's been there, uh, on top of that, there's been plenty of guys that have attended seminars that uh, because because uh, Matt Yaden, he was he was a coach at at the first Hangs with Bob Super Camp. So a lot of the guys that attended the first Hang with, Hangs with Bob Super Camp got to make many many appearances in Rocky Mountain Pro. So it's it's just been it's been super cool to see that aspect of it too. Is like those guys kind of flourish in in like some really cool like places around the country like Rocky. Mountain Pro, or you know, it's just that's that's been that's one one of the most rewarding parts about it is seeing seeing those guys really like go after it and you know move move their families and move them you know and uproot their lives to to go after to go after what they want what they really want in life. Cool, that's that's awesome to see. All right. So, um, okay, so we've been kind of tiptoeing about around it, but let's go ahead and talk about it now. So uh, we are having uh, this coming up here very soon in the Colorado area. We are having, now if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, this is the biggest super camp ever that uh, has ever been held uh, for you guys? Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So, I would say so. All right. Well, tell us, listeners, uh, about it. What's what's happening? What's going on? And the dates and everything. Well, it's uh, March March twenty eighth, uh, Thursday March to the thirty first through Sunday March thirty first, and um, we're 
inviting anybody from around the world to come. And it's uh, $300. And, but it's $300, in my opinion, well spent because you're going to get used on at least two out of the five events that are that weekend. Uh, Rocky Mountain Pro has four events. And Hugo's Lucha Libre has one. And they've um, been kind enough to offer a few select openings. I know we'll be working uh, that event, but um, a few select openings to their uh, group as well. And uh, so you have a shot really at all five shows. I don't think we're not, we're not guaranteeing that by any means we're guaranteeing at least two out of the four. So, um, and we've also figured it out with Billy Simmons coming with Chris Silvio coming with Matt Yaden. We also have Manny lemons and big Vig coming. Um, Al, Al, Al Snow, Snow from, from Al, OVW, uh, um, be- and they just announced that they have uh, re- renewed their agreement with wrestling. Um, Stevie Richards. I mean, you can. I think before Al's Al's uh, announcement, I think we were at 190 possible 192 bookings. So now that's got to be well over 200 now because OVW runs every week, TV every week on Wednesday, and then they run Saturday night specials. So that's 60 shows at least. So you have the potential to get booked on 250 shows. Now you're probably not going to get booked on 250 shows because that's a lot, but, um, but you have a chance to meet uh, five or six different promoters from five or six different parts of the country. And in this business, once you go to one show and you kind of branch out and meet people and network and prove that you're a good person, usually there's two or three promoters at every, every event at, at um, the event I was on, the event we were on last week, there were two or three different promoters, Tim, would you say? I mean, there's always two or yep. three promoters yep. at, at, mm-hmm. at, at shows, you know, people who either promote shows or work as bookers or whatnot. So um, so it's going to be four days of good training, um, wrestling skill, technique, um, promo skills, interview skills, business skills, how to make money in this business. Um how to market yourself, how to do social media properly. Tim does a nice, a nice piece on that, how to, how to photograph yourself properly, how to put out the proper videos and pictures and um, how to frame everything in the best possible light. So, um, so there's, it's going to be something that covers quite a bit of ground and there's going to be opportunities galore. And um, Matt Yaden at Rocky Mountain Pro has, a, has an excellent TV product. And you'll have a chance to wrestle uh, on a very well-known uh, Twitch television product. And, you know, they put a lot into it. And it's not just thrown together. It's not a public access show. They do a good job. And you'll have a chance to really branch out and do more in this business. And it, it's really just a, a, something that will give you a solid, solid foundation um, if you're just starting out or if you're kind of – in the middle of your journey and it'll give you a good pushing off point to let you know exactly where you need to go next. So, um, and like I said, we have, uh, there's, there, there'll be international opportunities too. uh, Chris Silvio, our dear friend from Florida. He is the booker of, uh, Cis- uh oh boy, Siciliano Italian wrestling. Um, I'm sure I butchered that name. My apologies to all my Italian friends out there. Um, but Chris is the best for SIW. Yeah. in Italy. And he also has, he's also wrestles uh, quite a bit in the UK. And if you can get to Italy, you can get around to the UK flights are very inexpensive. And he has, he promotes his own shows in Florida and has tons of in the Southern part of the country. Chris has a lot of uh, connections too. And then uh, Vig and, Manny Lemons just opened up Devotion Wrestling and they're doing a show a month and have a training school there and Matt's doing his thing and Al has of course OVW in Louisville, Kentucky and we should all wrestle at the Danny Davis Arena at least once in our life. I still have not had a chance to do that so I'd love to do that um, and I've, I've run shows occasionally and anybody knows that if you take my seminar you pretty much have an open door to come and be a guest at my show and I'll do my best to put you on so um, you know, we really have a ton of opportunities. And of course, Billy Simmons with the Kansas wrestling Alliance, which is four or five different promotions in can in the Kansas area, um, that run quite a few shows. So 
there'll be plenty of opportunity to get yourself booked and it'll be a good environment to do it. Um, you know, not a lot of pressure. You won't have to really hand resumes over and do an interview. You'll have basically a, a four day tryout to try out for all these companies and, and, and see if it's a good fit. So again, there'll be plenty of connections, plenty of uh, people to wrestle, plenty of good people to wrestle and a good way to kind of expand your boundaries. So all right. And, and, and th- there's also a just a, pro trainers going to be there too. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And Sorry. Rocky Mountain pro the premier wrestling organization in, in Colorado. I feel like, I feel like, uh, I feel like it's, uh, uh, the Mercury wrestling Academy is, is probably the best wrestling school within, within a 12, within a 12 hour driving, uh, radius. Um, there's, there's no, there's no better place than, than Mercury Wrestling Academy to, to get started. And, and, and who knows? And I just want to speak from, from a, a perspective for a second, just waiting to, uh, two guys that have never gotten the chance to wrestle in Colorado, uh, Bob Tolano, Chris Silvio. Um, but he also, he, uh, he talked, he talked briefly about Wildman Congo. Those are two guys that the fans are going to get super hyped about because those guys can go. Those guys can really do it. Whoever, whoever they're putting the ring with, it's it's going to be an awesome match. It does, like, they can wrestle a, a kitchen sink. They can wrestle a, a pan or a toothbrush, and, and they'd have an awesome match. So I want to see him wrestle a toothbrush. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> the business end. <laughs> always, always the business end. Right. <laughs> cool. Very awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, um, is it? I, I go ahead. Literally just, I literally just looked around my my. I literally just looked around my apartment and I was naming off things. That I said. So, <laughs> that's what they can wrestle. So. Well, this is right. what happens when we leave him to by himself in his apartment. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Start coming up <laughs> we'll, with ideas. We'll, we'll float. Flo is here, and she's 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 being my adult right now. So so she's she's, she's holding things. she's holding me to my. Oh, and and Tim met the love of his life in 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 Denver too at Rocky Mountain Pro. Yes, but we should. Yes. You know, you never know. You might find uh, your significant other there too at the camp. You yeah. never know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. You might you might find a significant other, and and Bob Bob will try to hook you up if he sees a love connection. He will try to make it happen. So Bob's I good will. at that. So I, 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 I'm, I'm not good at everything, but I'm good at that. That's, that's, the, that's the unspoken. That's the unspoken part about uh, hangs with Bob. If, that's right. If he if he finds a love connection for you, he will do everything in his power to make it possible. So. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so um, not to um, not to um, diminish the the super camp, but for the fans, people that may be attending these events, uh, sure. what do you guys have to say about that? I mean, hype up hype up those those events. What do you, what's going on there? Well, there's really no there's really no need to even hype them up. I mean, the <laughs> fact that you're gonna, they're going to see talent from all over the country, all over the world, um, different people that they've never seen before. And some really, I, I know some of the people that are coming, you know, if we have people from North Carolina coming, we have people from Dallas coming, um, people from new England yeah. coming. I mean, Chris Silvio is a treat to watch. Wild man Congo is a treat to watch. Okay. Uh, so there's going to be a bunch of different okay. people. Tim and I, Tim and I, yeah, for Victor yep. Andrews. Yep. And Tim and I have already, you know, we've already uh, made an open challenge to the tag team champions so we're hoping that'll happen at least once, um, you know, once that weekend, because that's all it'll take for us to win the win the titles. So, you know, we're it, it's we've, and I understand that uh, Chris Silvio, uh, we've asked him to put the SIW uh, heavyweight championship, the, the the Italian championship, on the line as well. So they're going to see some different title matches. They're going to see some different matchups that they wouldn't see. And they're going to get to know some different wrestlers from around the country that they're going to become fans of. And these, some of these guys really are just, just need a couple more breaks to, to make it. And some of them are going to be new guys that are and, and girls that are kind of just getting their start. And 
you know, they'll be, they'll be, wow, I saw him or her when they first started at this camp and look where they are five years from now. So it's going to be a, a cool opportunity for fans to see new talent and see some of the old talent, you know, the, the homegrown talent, the Denver talent mix in with people from all over the country. And I always think that's kind of neat when you see different people wrestle different people that they wouldn't necessarily wrestle. And I think that's, that's kind of cool. They develop a good appreciation for each other, you know? So. All right. So, so then we got, so just to um, spell it all out. So on Thursday, we got the um, ignition and charged event at the Jefferson County fairgrounds in golden Uh, Friday night. We have the Rocky mountain pro experience. And then Saturday we have the event at the Romero's Canine Club, which also happens to be my birthday. Uh, All right. Oh. <laughs> and then uh, Sunday. Oh, right. And then Sunday right. is the Mute Summit uh, event, and then the, also the uh, Hugo's event. Yeah, when I saw you guys pop up on the Hugo's uh, poster, I was like, "Oh wow, cool!" Is that the first time you guys have wrestled yeah. for them? <laughs> no, we were it will, it will. Uh, for Hugo's. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, yeah, so we're actually doing two, at least two lucha events. Uh, we're actually wrestling mm-hmm. for Carlos Galli in Chicago in a, in, a, in on May fifth, Cinco de Mayo. So we're we're getting our lucha fix in. I, I I've never worked any lucha events. I heard they're fun as heck though. So they're and I I heard it's a blast. And Tim and I are always looking to up our game and wrestle different styles and and take on different opponents that can make us better. So we're just thrilled as hell to, to make it all work and we're very we're very uh, pleased that hugo made room for us and we're gonna we're not gonna let those good fans down and maybe we'll create an awareness of some of the fans that maybe don't attend the rocky mountain events and vice versa of you know what they can you know what they can see when they check out each other's events you know right uh tim do you have anything to add about that the the events yeah. that weekend any thoughts? Super excited. I love the show people wrestling five times and and on top of on top of the seminar and, and all that good stuff. I'm I'm super excited. I, I hope I hope we get to I hope on, on Sunday at Hugo's we get to wrestle a fast paced uh Lucha tag team because we haven't we haven't got to we haven't got quite that yet. We've gotten to wrestle some fast paced teams but but nothing nothing really of the lucha uh per se, like the the, the pure lucha style and I'd I'd love to I'd love to have that as a challenge. I can't wait. I I can't wait to get my hands on the, the Rocky Mountain Pro tag team champion. because um, I I'm pretty sure it's a, like we we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna make it happen this time. You know, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make that we're gonna, we're gonna have the titles around our way and, and all that good stuff. Uh, hopefully, it'll be warm at, at Romero's in Lafayette. <laughs> uh, well, it was like 37 degrees. So hopefully, I'm I'm hoping for a nice weather week next week because that's it's gonna be it's it's uh, hopefully it doesn't snow or anything like that. Because I know you saw the weather that you guys have been getting out there. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it stays. Hopefully it stays. Um, but yeah. And, <coughs> Excuse and me. I just Rocky Mountain Rocky Mountain Pro is my home. Um, it's 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 the place where where I I got to build a lot of confidence in myself there, and I got to I got to meet some of my dearest friends and and my my lovely girlfriend there and. And it's just, I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to see, I'm excited to see you. We haven't seen you since October. It'll be a good time. We got a brand new, we got a brand new Legos inspired. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a real good time. It's, it's Rocky Mountain Pro is my, one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite places in the entire country, just because it's, it's, it's home. It's, it's home, but it's, it's 2000 miles away, but it's still home. Gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, Tim, to let you know, I have been looking at the weather because I know, you know, the Romero's is outside. Um, but so far it is showing that we're supposed to be in the forties and fifties in the day, um, for the next, uh, week and a half or so. 
So, and only about yeah. 10, only 10% chance of uh, precipitation. So I think we oh. might be okay. All right. Well, Bob and I might need to bring our, our to wrestle in. It's going to be in the 40s. So, yeah. So that's, uh, as long as it, as long as it doesn't, All right. Okay. Well, Is so, there? Yeah, I think um, I think Tim may have some internet connection issues. Uh, he's I'm not... c- cutting out just a smidge in there. But, uh, here? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. And, uh, do you want me to repeat what I? Yeah, you're just or... your last your last part. Yeah. You find the internet. Yeah. You said you're you're gonna bring some probably well, some warmer I'll weather be... gear. Yeah. Well, we will bring our uh, we will bring our snow suits. Okay. There you uh, go. In case it's in case it's in the low forties and as long as it doesn't as long as it doesn't snow or, or rain. Yeah, uh, I'm ex- I'm excited for this week and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a great one. Awesome. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, I really appreciate awesome. both of you coming on to the podcast awesome. this time around. But before I let you go, if people wanted to, and if they're not following you on social media, uh, the the Facebooks and Hello. the Twitter, uh, where can Hello. they find you guys? Did we lose Artie now? Oh, no, I'm still here. I think we lost Artie. Uh-oh. I think right. we lost him. We're taking over the podcast. <laughs> yes, we're here on the podcast. This is not Mr. The, this is not Mr. Fourth Throw anymore. This is <laughs> the Tough Guy Inc. podcast, and we're like the NWO. Is... We're taking over. <laughs> All right. This is Mr. Mr. Fifth Row and Mr. Sixth Row. <laughs> I'm just trying to find a hotel that makes sense going from Alabama to West Virginia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, That's what I'm doing. This is what we do, fans. Bob looks for hotels for <laughs> hours on end and finally finds one. This is uh, the life. The fun okay. national wrestling life. Find hotels with Southwest Points attached to them. <laughs> uh, find rental cars and and yep. ways to ways to find shows that are within eight hours of home. Correct. Yeah, so huh. Okay. So All right. Can you guys, I think can we you guys, lost them. Do you guys right, hear me? Well, then for uh, oh. for Tim Hughes, this is Brutal Bob mm-hmm. Evans, and we will see you guys uh, later on for the exciting uh, Rocky Mountain uh, Hangs with Bob Super Camp. All right. All right. Take care, everyone. All right. Love you guys. Oh, I think. Okay, yeah. I'm back on now. Oh, you back? Oh, we just, we just, we just I know. wrapped up, wrapped up the whole thing. <laughs> I, uh, Skype, mute, Skype muted me. So, um, I was just, oh, I, w- I was just, uh, saying t- uh, to you guys, I really appreciate you coming on the show, but before I let you go, uh, if people are, are, are not following you on social media and I don't know why they wouldn't be, tell us, tell the listeners, uh, where they can find you on the Facebook, the Twitter, etc. Uh, you can find me at, at Tough Timmy on Twitter, and you can you can follow me on Instagram at Tough Timmy H, all one all one word. And um, you can also friend me on Facebook. I've only got like fifty friends uh, friends left. Uh, friend me on Facebook. I'll be your friend. I'm a friendly guy. Yep. For uh, for the at least the next fifty people, and other than that, I'm not going to be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's that's where that's where you can find us or me at least not bob well yeah i'm on uh bob evans on uh well at brutal bob evans on twitter uh brutal underscore bob underscore evans on instagram but i'm not much of an instagram guy because i'm an old guy um and then you can you can find find me on facebook Unfortunately, you won't be able to friend me, but you can follow me. Um, I have a thousand friend requests that I can't get to, so um, you're better off following me, um, and that way you can get my stuff. And feel free to message me on there too. Um, we have a, a Hangs with Bob seminar and Tough Guy Inc. page, 
The best way to get to that is toughguyinc.com. Um, but you can look it up. It'll pop right up. If you put tough guy Inc or hangs with Bob seminars, usually just pops right up in the search bar. So, and if you, there's a pinned calendar up there and it'll tell you where we're going to be. And, uh, oh, cool. and that reminds me, I need to update it, but it's pretty updated. So most of the stuff is there. So including, including Nick Westgate's wedding and my daughter's, uh, dance recital. <laughs> so we got all that stuff in there too, just so I don't forget myself. So, <laughs> All right, yep. cool. All right, once again, I, I thank you both, and I'm so excited to see you in a little bit more than a week. All right, thank you for having us. Yeah, it's exciting. Thank you so much for having us. I appreciate it. Once again, a big thank you to Tough Guy Inc., Brutal Bob Evans, and Tough Timmy Hughes for coming on to the podcast for this episode and letting us and all the listeners know about the great event that hangs with Bob Supercamp that is happening on March 28th through March 31st here in Denver, Colorado, and all of the great associated events and shows that are happening with that, as well as the uh, coaches and agents that are uh, coming from all these different promotions, like they had mentioned, um, you know, Rocky Mountain Pro, the Kansas City, uh, Billy Simmons, um, you know, Big Vig, Manny Lemons from uh, DCW, from Devotion, uh, and then Congo from ROH and Monster Factory, Chris uh, Silvio from OVW and SIW Italy. Uh, it's going to be a great time, so... It should be lots and lots of fun. I am excited. I don't know how the wrestlers are going to do it, attending these uh, super camp and seminars and also going to uh, perform on the shows. As a fan, when I go to this many shows in a row, I'm exhausted and I'm just cheering the guys and gals on. So um, a big kudos to all of them. For doing that. So that is in, as the time of this recording, a little bit more than a week, but I wanted to go ahead and get it promoted here. So if you are listening and undecided to go, I think it is well worth your time and money to get this level of training and exposure. Uh, I was going to um, say maybe possibly during the interview with Bob and Tim, but it is great seeing talent um, get into promotions that, as a fan, getting to see these talent. And um, one of my biggest ones that I really love, and the first time I saw him, and I think I even mentioned this on Twitter, is the young gun Chandler Hopkins. Uh, When I first saw him, when he first did his... Uh, appearance in Rocky Mountain Pro number one is his ring gear his ring attire popped to me because I felt like it was a complete package it helped his character and then his foundation the wrestling that he had was great and then when he came back and this most recent time and had a killer match probably the match of the night with uh Curtis Cole I thought that was fantastic and I loved seeing him and I told him I want him to come back real soon and if I ever had a chance to go to Texas uh, and see him in one of his um, local promotions one of his promotions that he wrestles a more regular basis I might even do that so that's one thing to think about as for the wrestlers to in the fan interaction to know keep in your back of your mind I would think that this is one of those things to get that exposure and build up your fan base even from afar you know even though Texas and Colorado are not necessarily too far but every little bit helps I would think so let's switch gears for just a moment and do the week in review. So this past week on Thursday, as usual, we had the Rocky Mountain Pro Ignition and Charge shows. It was great. It was 
uh, we saw a little bit of different kind of uh, matches, I thought, and different faces here on Ignition and, and Chart. I, great. The writing, the storylines, I thought, are just continuing to hit. Loved it. And um, then on this past Saturday, we had the second Respect Women's Wrestling Show from the Herman's Hideaway. I attended that. And, of course, Leva Bates was back in town. She had a great match with uh, Bentley Powell. And uh, Heather Moreau was in town as well. It was fantastic, I thought. And then we had the uh, tail versus tail match, the kangaroo versus the cat, uh, Simi Lockhart and uh, Ali Gatto. And they had a great match, too. So, And it was also nice to see Bentley just call out Ali Gatto as I had mentioned before, and when I interviewed her with Anaya, mentioning that, you know, Ali Gatto is the standard of Colorado women's professional wrestling, and Bentley is now taking exception to that because she cut a scathing promo, and it looks like her and Ali Gatto will be facing off each other when it comes to volume three of the respect women's wrestling event coming up next month. So, well, what else do we got? Well, let's look forward to what we have coming up in the near future. So this Thursday, we have the Rocky mountain pro charge ignition, get your tickets at RMP dot com. Uh, you can also get tickets at the door as well. Of course, they're more expensive if you don't get them in advance. Then on Friday, Rocky Mountain Pro is heading back to the Alamo. Do you remember the Alamo? Draft House, that is. They have their wrestling event, and then they show a movie afterwards. Uh, you can get tickets at the Alamo Draft House website or the app, and that's how I got mine. The scheduled show, movie after the wrestling, is Hot Fuzz, Fuzz, which is another movie I have not seen yet. So kudos and Rocky Mountain Pro, uh, Alamo Drafthouse, keep it up, uh, showing some movies that I have not seen. And there's actually been a lot of movies I have not seen, even though... Uh, in my one of my former podcasts that I've done, the uh, TTN at the Movies, with uh, my great co-host Daisy, uh, we did watch uh, quite a few movies, but there's still some holes in my movie watching experience. So if you guys ever need to decide on a movie, hit me up. You know, you guys know where to find me. Then on Saturday, Iron Hills Championship Wrestling is coming back for their Living the Dream show on the 23rd from Union Station, uh, 8 p.m. bell time, 2419 North Union Boulevard in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Tickets can be found at IHCWrestling.com. Looks like a great show. Uh, looks like um, tickets are twenty dollars for front row, general admission ten, five dollars cheaper or five dollars more expensive, I should say, at the door. So get those tickets in advance. Then on Sunday, and I'm not don't have a lot of information on this, but we have Colorado Springs Russell Shesh. Shesh. Uh, it is happening in, uh, Colorado Springs. Well, you know, that's about it. Uh, <laughs> don't know where else to say what's happening, but it's a wrestling show. Looks like a, um, marijuana inspired 
show. All we have to say is, let's say, it says, Join us for an evening of wrestling in a friendly environment. Local wrestlers and some well-known personalities come together. Come join us. VIP passes get preferred seating and a gift bag. Limited VIP passes available. Once they're gone, they are gone. So... Um, it looks like the basket has a THC drink salve, uh, CBD salve, some gummies, some candies. So it looks like, um, hey, there you have it. Friendly environment. So, hey, uh, before we go, let me go ahead and plug. If you want to get in contact with the show, uh, hit us up on Twitter at at Russell Altitude. You can email, uh, just email me directly, mrfourthrow at gmail.com. The website is up and running. It's not pretty yet, but it's functional for the most part, wrestlingwithaltitude.com. And if you guys are enjoying the Wrestling With Altitude podcast, uh, that we are hosted by the Trending Topics Network, and there are some other great shows on the network, such as Wrestling Cheers, the Spanish Announce Table, and Chill, the Eurovision Showcase, and Old School at the Movies. So I hope you guys all had fun this time around and having fun wrestling with Altitude. Altitude.